Now, of course, one of the most anticipated releases of 2023 is Absolute Aventus by Creed. The original Creed is 13 years old. It came out in 2010. Of course, it's become the most complimented niche fragrance for some. We've had Aventus for her, Aventus Cologne. Here we have Absolute Aventus, and we already have an inspiration. This is by the Dua brand. It's called Poseidon's Absolute Elixir. I'm excited to give you my thoughts on this brand new release, so make sure to stay tuned. Before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on Poseidon's Absolute Elixir, I'm going to let you know how close I think it is to Absolute Aventus. And I got a sample here courtesy of my friend Chris. Thank you so much for sending it over to me. But before I begin the video, I do want to mention that if you're a fan of fragrance related content, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and please give this video a thumbs up for the algorithm. It would really really mean a lot to me. We all know the original Aventus. Pineapple, apple, birch tar, blackcurrant, vanilla. It's this beautiful, sweet, zesty, fruity, pineapple, bergamot type of a fragrance with a touch of smoke on account of the birch tar. Aventus cologne, of course, was much brighter, much more of an emphasis on the citrus, very effervescent. You look at the note breakdown for Absolute Aventus, there's citron, pink pepper, there's cardamom, so you do have some spicy elements introduced into the mix. You also have a tad bit of cinnamon in there as well. And according to one online fragrance forum, there's no pineapple listed as a note. Of course, it does have that characteristic Aventus-y opening and whether that be bergamot or pineapple, it has the zest, it has the fruitiness. Nevertheless, I'm here to talk about the inspiration. I'm gonna let you know how close I think it is to the original, but let's start things off with a quick look at the presentation first. So right in the opening of this fragrance, it's bright, it's juicy, it's zesty. You have that fullness in there. And of course, there is no pineapple in the note breakdown as far as I was able to discern, but you still get, you still get that pineapple introduction. You still get that freshness. You still get that zest. You still get that bright, juicy appeal that you've gotten all along from the original Aventus. And of course, I do have a sample of the real Absolute Aventus so that I can juxtapose them and try to pick up on what the mind new differences are, if there are ever e even any to begin with. And what I can say here is that Dua got it so close to the original. The only thing that I notice is that the Dua is actually stronger. And I feel like the Dua is perhaps even just a tad bit spicier. So it takes maybe, you know, uh, an hour for the Dua to do what it takes an hour and a half for the original to do in terms of the evolution. But the Dua, as far as I'm concerned, is actually a lot stronger just based off of the sample that I have in front of me here. So it opens up very bright, very zesty. You do have the bergamot, which I think is the star player in terms of the citrus fruits. And of course you give this chance, uh, you give this fragrance a chance to settle down and you are gonna notice some of those spicy elements coming to the fore and I get them right away. And it's actually quite interesting because a lot of people have compared this to Apex by Roja Parfum. Some people have also compared it to um, Dior Sauvage Elixir. And I can actually see where they're going with it. And I do see a little bit of both of those fragrances in here. And of course, Sauvage Elixir came out first. And I think Apex in some way was fashioned around Sauvage Elixir. With this fragrance, it actually does open up with that spice in combination with the zest. So especially with the Dua, you know, like I said, it opens up quite strong. You are going to get that spice right away. And it, I have a hard time saying it's 100% cinnamon or 100% cardamom. I think the spices are actually working in tandem. And I think there's a very nice balance of everything happening in here. And of course, when I first smelled Sauvage Elixir <laughs> by Christian Dior, I said it smelled similar to Dracar Noir by Guy La Roche. And I still get that, believe it or not. I think it has a bit of that old school vibe, but I find Christian Dior's Sauvage Elixir to be quite on the mature side of things. Opposite to that, I find that on account of the zest and the brightness, this one is actually much brighter, much fresher. 
in comparison to something like a Roja Parfum Apex or a Dior Sauvage Elixir. So I actually find this to be more versatile than both of those fragrances. And you know, it's the same thing that can be said about the original Creed Aventus. It's always been heralded as sort of the most versatile fragrance. People got decent performance from it. So they said you can wear it in the colder weather. The touch of smoke made it appropriate for the fall and winter, but it had enough of that zest that you can wear it in the hotter weather. And of course, with that mass appealing quality, the compliment factor, there was never a bad time to wear it, casual, formal. The only thing that set it back is that it was masculine leaning, so it's hard for a lot of people to say it's a totally unisex release. But with this fragrance, we're dealing with something that is far more versatile than Dior's Sauvage Elixir. So I love the way that it opens up. I love the touch of spice that's in here. And yes, I am still getting a bit of that vanillic sweetness in the dry down, a little amber, a little vanilla, but again, it just grounds the fragrance. It gives it that weight and that body that's occupying the base. This is gonna be another compliment getter through and through. This is a more mature Creed Aventus. So if you're looking for something flirtatious, youthful, upbeat, you know, a little playful in nature, you're going to go with Creed Aventus. Of course, if you're looking for something more relaxed, more subdued, more nonchalant, more cavalier, you're going to go with something like an Arolfa or Millicent Imperial. If you're looking for something that you want to wear when you're trying to seal the deal, you're going to go with Absolute Aventus or you're going to go with Poseidon's Absolute Elixir, which is Dua's interpretation of Creed's Absolute Aventus. I think they hit the nail right on the head with this one, and I am so glad that even though I don't own a full bottle of Absolute Aventus, I'm so glad that I own the inspiration. I'm going to be wearing this one in its place until I decide it's worth it to pay the money to buy a bottle of the original. Let's go ahead and finish things off with my overall assessment. So first up, in terms of the uniqueness and the overall smell, well, of course, this is a clone, so it's not unique in that sense, but they did capture the essence of Absolute Aventus so wonderfully. They are so incredibly similar to one another, and it's reassuring to know that in this age where niche fragrances are selling for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars that you can go ahead and purchase an alternative. And now with the Black Friday sale, they are running, I think the biggest sale that they've ever ran uh, in terms of the percentage off from bottles. And you can check it out for yourself. The link's gonna be down below. This is not a sponsored video and that's not an affiliate link to the brand's website. I'm just trying to make it easier for you to find this stuff if indeed you are interested. Longevity, 12 plus hours, extract the parfum. Projection on this one was fantastic for the first hour and a half of application going on two hours. It radiated just a little bit beyond an arm's length, but it became an elbows length scent right around hour nine, a skin scent right around hour 12. Versatility, a bit more masculine than the original Creed Aventus. I think this one is great for formal scenarios and I would prefer to wear this one in the colder weather as opposed to the hotter weather. I would wear it in the spring, but maybe not in the dead of summer. And I think this one, like I said before, is a bit more on the masculine side of things. And I think somebody a little bit older will probably have more appreciation for this one. And of course, in terms of the presentation, I do like the graphic here. I think the Poseidon looks quite fierce compared to the other bottles, although he's always usually represented quite accurately, I would say so in terms of how powerful and vigorous he is. My final verdict on this fragrance is, if you are looking for a Creed Absolute Aventus alternative, you know the fragrance just came out, you don't wanna spend hundreds of dollars for a bottle of the original, you want an inspiration that comes so remarkably close, check this out, link down below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you took something of value from today's review. If you did, please do consider supporting the channel by subscribing to it, hit the bell, and give this video a thumbs up. Thanks again for watching. I love you guys, and we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.